Hey guys, this is Chesney Hawks here. You are watching My Hammers 11 with the one and only Russ. Hi everybody, Russ and My Hammers 11. Hope you are all safe and well. It's coming home. Don't forget it's coming home. Football's coming home. If you're new to the channel, don't believe me. Look, it actually says it on the screen. Football's coming home. If you don't, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, hit the bell icon. It's your made of any time we put new content on. We've got an ex-hammer. We've got an ex-hammer interview. A bit different today, and hopefully you enjoy it. It's actually the first time I've interviewed a player, bar a little sort of chat with um, Maka, TC, and, uh, and Waldy the other day, but without a computer, without real life, real people. And we interviewed Michael Hughes. Michael Hughes, who, uh, who played 97 times for the first team uh, for West Ham and scored six goals. I'm saying this now because I didn't actually do the in the intro because we started chatting and it just went on um, as as these uh, these interviews do. But obviously Michael picked his 11 and um, talks quite candidly about football um, and about uh, how it was back in the day which is crazy to think it was 26 years ago, roughly. Um, that he played 1994, he signed for the club um, on loan, famously from Strasbourg, for, in essence, two seasons. He did one season, then he went back another season, and then he signed um, for, on, the, on a free. He was the first British player to sign on a Bosman ruling for free. So there we go, a little bit of trivia for you. And also, he scored six goals for the club, one of them, Cost Man United the title when we drew one all with Man United and Blackburn won uh, in that incredible season. And why so Alex still hates us? But anyway, hope you enjoy it. Give it a thumb, give it a share, give it a thumb, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, give it a share, and I'll see you guys very very soon. Enjoy the interview. The old days, um, <laughs> we do the, the old days. It's ridiculous when you think about it, but it is. You know, I saw, I saw, I saw a picture of you on that that horrible kit. The uh, the bubbles one. It was like the centennial kit, and this year is 126th year. All right. So that's 26 years ago. Oh, I've done the maths. 26 years ago. Yeah. That it was. Doesn't feel like 26 years ago. No, no. It's Sometimes crazy. it does though, but it flies by. Yeah. Absolutely flies by. I can't even remember that kit you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the one with the. It's the one with the. It's the pony. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm with the fucking horrible, fucking horrible. Cut. Where is it? I have to find it with the with the collar. Oh dear. Oh, the collar. Yeah, I remember that, the and collar. And it was the, the. And I think a lot of the boys chopped them collars off. You know. Was it? Cut them off because they were they scratched. If I don't remember right, they scratched her neck. Yeah. Brilliant. Depends how much running you did though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll show it you. I know, you know it as soon as you've seen it. It's had the horrible bubbles on it as well. Uh, that one. Yeah. Yeah. See, that was a centennial kit because that had all those horrible bubbles in and it had 100 in the numbers, I remember. And this year is 120. Yeah, it's 126 years this year. The other day was our birthday. Yeah, I remember that kit now. It was a heavy kit as well. It was heavy. Was it? Yeah. But that was before the... Started bringing on all the new kind of thun dangled material that was lighter and yeah. all the different colours and all the psych <laughs> psychological stuff started coming into it. That was, that was well before all that. It was starting to come in at the time, I remember, because Arsene Wenger had brought yeah. up the Arsenal, hadn't he? When he came in and they were starting to change things a wee bit slightly yeah. then. But because yeah. I'd come from France yeah. to West Ham. Yeah. And I swear to God, I'm not just saying this, but they were like 10 years ahead. Yeah, when really. I was there for for the diet. Yeah, for the the way they trained. Mm. Just everything was so 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 far in front. Crazy. It was. It was mad. Yeah. Was, and and going from English football to that was like, what's going on here? Yeah. You know, because obviously you did. So you did like yeah. Because obviously you, it was a character. Then you went on. You was a trainee at Man City, weren't you? And then you went to France. So how did so what oh, we, 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 we'll start we'll start the interview that's about um, so how did that happen because that's not an obvious part it, obviously now it's an obvious path because you know your Jude Bellingham's your Sancho's at uh, seventeen they they fuck off to Germany don't they basically yeah. so how did that happen because you know why I don't know <laughs> <laughs> even to this day I've have an idea but I don't know exactly but uh, Man City had sort of broken into the team that that yeah. year and. Peter Reid was the manager and great guy, 
yeah. played for Peter Reid. I mean, I was lucky. Uh, I was playing on the left wing, and had Peter Reid and Steve McMahon, wow. the two centre midfield players. Yeah, you're you not know. getting no shit off the. Oh my god, what they a, sort you right out. Just spent most of the game just watching what they were doing. Yeah, you know, but uh, Reid was a good guy to play for, but he always he wanted me to cross the ball, and as a winger. That's all I should have done. Yeah. Cross it, cross it, cross it, cross it. Because we had big Nell Quinn up front. Yeah. And uh, you want to put balls in the box when you get big funny. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I didn't cross it enough. Sometimes I'd try and check back and beat the full whack again and do yeah. daft things like that. But I was young, so I, he, I wasn't exactly his cup of tea. Yeah. So uh, I was up for a new contract and... The terms they offered kind of told me that they didn't want me to stay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like. so, yeah, I get you. Uh, I loved that Man City. Yeah, so I would, have, I would have gladly stayed, but when you sort of know that not through the manager's fault, through my fault, yeah. because I wasn't doing what he was asking me to do, to okay. be quite honest. Yeah, with yeah, yeah, so, yeah, I get you. So you were thinking, well, maybe the future lies elsewhere. And I, we played West Germany. I think it was my third cap for Northern Ireland. Yeah. Out there. And I scored a goal. And uh, after that, the sort of phone started ringing a wee bit. Yeah. Uh, no English clubs, but the Strasbourg, a team in France came in, but I think more so because maybe it was something to do with the transfer fee or sure. something like that. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not too sure. Yeah. But anyway, I went out there and for a couple of weeks and I loved, just loved it. Yeah. Just loved what they were doing out there. And to be yeah. honest with you, it was a change. It was sometimes oh, I suppose, yeah, complete change of scenery and culture for you, definitely. Yeah, complete change. And, well, it was, it was a nice change. Yeah. Uh, it's one of those things as well, I suppose, when... I mean, as I said, nowadays, I mean, it was, it was relatively unusual to do that in your... Sort of back back then, but, you know, sort of, sort of, because now, as of nowadays, as you said, you know, they're all buggering off to, to you know, Germany, usually, um, to try and get that uh, try and get that first-team experience. But, I mean, when you went to Strasbourg, did, I, I imagine it was probably a four-year deal you signed. It was. <laughs> How do you know that? I just, do you know, my, my, my powers of suggestion uh, suggest that that was a four-year deal. Because obviously, you're two years there, and then you end up being at West Ham for, for, for two, for, two, in essence, years, two, yeah. two one-season loans or whatever. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Uh -huh. So how, and again, it's, it's, it's a strange, I always like to ask people about when they go to, you know, when they join West Ham, but what happened? So obviously... Did your agent get, or were you looking for a move, or? I, well, sort of, yeah. yeah. And I was speaking to Rowley, Keith Rowland. Yeah. In the Northern Ireland set up, and, and me and him roomed together. And we got on well, and I was saying, I'm thinking of coming back, you know, yeah. what, do you, what do you think? Did, did you have a word with, well, I can say this now, like, but yeah, yeah, yeah. have a word with Harry and see if he'd be interested, or see, see, yeah, see yeah. about, blah, 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 blah. And then... The, it started to, to move a wee bit and it took a wee while but Harry came out to France sure and Peter, um, Peter Story came out and uh, didn't watch me play or anything but <laughs> I, I think they must have maybe watched an international game I'm not too sure yeah. are they needed someone on the left wing or I think yeah, yeah, at the yeah. time West Ham I think they were struggling a wee bit yeah it was yeah we were it was we'd, we'd obviously we'd been promoted 90 the 93-94 season and yeah we was Okay, it was okay. Yeah. I think they were looking for. So I think they were looking for yeah. players, mm. and I think you know, you know, uh, and that swung it for me, Harry. Them coming out to France, yeah, to come out and sit in of an evening and sort of had a chat with the with me and the board at France, and someone was doing the, the you, bits the, in between, you know, ch ch explaining to everybody yeah. what everything went on, on. What do you call that? Translation, translator, translation, translator, the translator. and uh, and then we went for a meal afterwards. Uh, and I just thought it was a big thing for someone to come out like someone like Harry to come out and actually make the effort to come out to France and yeah. and, and do that so I thought yeah I, I'm, I'm going to sign for West Ham but Rolly had told me all about the club anyway yeah, I could imagine. how good it was everything about it and it just sounded like just a, just a, the type of place that you wanted to go to to play your play your yeah. football yeah. and I thought absolutely I've never yeah. thought about going to West Ham really ever you know because there's so yeah. many clubs you there's know so many yeah, so yeah. many and you're thinking especially in london and london had never appealed to me really mm. i don't know why i just thought london that won't suit me coming from like a small place in northern ireland manchester was okay because mm. manchester wasn't it was happening but it wasn't yeah. like didn't feel like london you know yes uh, london just felt like the big smoke but when i got there i just 
fell in love with the place and stuff. Yeah. I just really enjoyed it. But my first match <laughs> was like Leeds, Leeds away, I think. Yeah. And it was on Sky. It was a Sky match. Now, I hadn't played much for Strasbourg yeah. at all. And uh, I wasn't really that fit, to be honest. And I came back and Harry says, you should be fit, right? I go, and I'm like, yeah, of course I am. And uh, <laughs> they says, right, Frank Lampard, Frank Senior took me out training one day and he just, it was, I think it was a Wednesday, and we did a bit of running. Yeah. And my legs were <laughs> gone. Sure. sure. So I had a nightmare at uh, Leeds. Yeah. Because I could barely run. That's my excuse anyway. <laughs> and then I got dropped for the next match. And I thought, oh my God, what have I done here? Yeah. I've done it wrong. But I was just happy to be back. Yeah, and I thought, yeah, yeah. Well, take your time and try and get in the team. But that's the last thing you want. You don't want to be nah. a new guy comes in and has a nightmare and then gets dropped for the next Yeah, game. yeah. But it's, uh, it's okay. It's okay. The lads yeah. were good at taking the mickey out of you. So oh, yeah, well, that's that what I, yeah. I mean, you them. had a, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things, looking, obviously, and then, and obviously, we'll, we'll come back for the year, because we'll talk about a certain goal, and, and we might properly introduce you in a minute, Michael, anyways, because <laughs> people are like, who's this bloke? <laughs> so, so, obviously, you, was it initially a season loan, and then did you have to go back and come back, or did you just stay there, so we really knew you for another year? Yeah, it was a season. Uh but that that second part of it hadn't been agreed. Yeah. Uh, so I went back to Strasbourg, and then I, 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 Russell, I don't know, you know, because I didn't really have an agent at the time. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't like it seems to be nowadays where you have maybe yeah, four or five that. agents. Yeah. What I'm led to believe players. Yeah. Are. So it was kind of you were thinking, what's going on here? Am I going back? Do they want me back? Sure. Uh, so I did my did pre season in Strasbourg, and then. It started to move. I got a call saying, you want to come back? Blah, 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 blah. Mm. And I was like, absolutely, of course I want, I want mm. to come back. Uh, now, I can't remember if that goal you're talking about was my first year at West Ham or the second. It was the I've second got to think, year. Yeah, but I mean, you, you, I mean, you scored six goals so for West Ham. That um, many, yeah. That, that many. <laughs> and, and 97 appearances. 97, oh, really? 97? First, first team appearances. I don't even know that. 97, wow. I think it's 90 odd starts and, uh, or something like that. It, you know, it's, I mean, you know, it's, it's a, almost 100 clubs, you know what I mean? But, yeah, that one goal, I believe that one goal was the first seat, was the first loan spill. Oh, was it? I believe so. I can't remember exactly. I can't yeah. remember either. <laughs> that probably got me back for the second loan yeah, spill. Yeah, it did. It was the last game <laughs> of the season, wasn't it? Else. <laughs> last game. For that, for, we are referring to, so Michael scored um, uh, a goal which, you know, if you went out for a night out around Blackburn, you probably wouldn't have to buy a pint forever. And they wouldn't know where I was in Blackburn. <laughs> they barely know how I was. Just wear a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I, I scored the goal which meant Man United didn't win the title and uh, and Blackburn <laughs> did yeah well I'll tell you something uh, I wouldn't wear it in Belfast no nah, no good point actually yeah I wouldn't wear that yes because yeah. I went to a bar literally two weeks after the season had ended oh no like Liber- half Liverpool half United I must have gone into the United the wrong half <laughs> and then basically two or three blokes went out Really? Wow. I wasn't going to argue with them. No, 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 no. no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm okay, next one. So, half the the country liked me and half the country despised me. Yeah. And probably still do to this day. Yeah, I mean, Sir Alex, Sir Alex still, yeah, I mean, Sir Alex still hates West Ham, still doesn't, you know, because of, well, it's twice we've done it. Mm. Um, We were famously going, I think we went down the 91-92 season and we drew nil-nil the last game of the season, we were all but down and we cost them the title against Leeds. Um, so, oh, he hates us and, you know. Did Kenny not score a goal as well? Kenny, did Kenny not score a goal against them for something? I can't remember. Maybe I'm yeah, no, you're right. I think it might be one all. Yeah, you're right. Kenny, Kenny did. Kenny did. And Kenny will watch this and I know you're going to go see him in a minute. So I'm pretty sure he did. I'm pretty sure he did. So, so. we'll just say I that. I remember him telling me about it. <laughs> every, every, night every, every time you meet him, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, it's one, of those, it's one of those things. I mean, you know, West Ham. It's always you know we always like to spoil the party. This year's been a bit different. Been great. This year, but yeah, been amazing. Yeah. I mean, they seem to have been knocking, knocking on the door. So they have now. They have a good season and then not such a it, good season. It tends but... to be a five-year cycle. So the last time I think we had a good season would have been the last season at the bowling, and then I think before then would have been maybe when we got to the FA Cup final, which is another six. So it's literally every five, six years we have exactly. a good, a good. Exactly what it is. Yeah. So yeah. Well, it looks like that's going to be hopefully every year now. Well, I hope so. Yeah. 
It'd be nice, wouldn't it? Okay. It'd be nice. If everything else that's gone in the world, the one thing that West Ham fans haven't had to worry about is West Ham. You know, like getting down, you know, of all the crap that's gone in the right. world. Um, and, and, you know, and, and ironically that, that they've, they've turned up the, the season when there's been no bugger there. Well, I've, I've been there. I've, I've been there at the ground. But it's, um, yeah, it's, it's one of those things. I think people are chomping at the bits to go back. I think it's to be fair. I think, you know, I mean, the, the, the era you played, that Red Nap era, that was probably my most fun era. I love that era. I think it was a really exciting time. Um, loads of people going in and out. Um, loads of transfers. Loads of random transfers as well. <laughs> we can talk about Because you, Cassie, I was thinking about it the other day. Like, your tenure at West Ham, you had Boogers. Yeah. You had Boogers. Um, you'd have had Darnie. Yeah. Darnie, the Portuguese superstar. Um, you had... Rada Choi, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you had that whole Palo Food tray. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, you had some really, really. I mean, obviously, we've had people like we had, we had like Steve, we had Jonesy on the other. You know, Jonesy's a good friend of the channel and and various others, and they talk about Palo Food tray and oh, we had someone I had play the other day. Oh my god, I'm so sorry, I can't remember the name, but. You know, it was Steve Motone. That's it. It's Steve Motone, the reserve goalkeeper. Do you remember yes, the Australian I, guy? Yes, yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. The Australian guy. He it's Steve on, and Steve acted as the translator for Paolo and Harry in the middle. That's right. I remember that. Yeah, because he didn't. Was it Spanish or suppose he speaks Spanish? It was Portuguese. Portuguese. So yeah, he spoke. Yeah, I think he had his Portuguese wife. Steve did, and so That's right. yeah. Back memories now, Ross. You have you forget things. It's so funny, yeah. And right. Steve and they both. I mean, we had we had Steve. We had, we had both Steves on, and they were talking about Paolo. Um, you know, when we were, you're doing your pre-season running, <laughs> and and he turned up at, at Hainault Forest in his limousine, and. <laughs> Different word it's for great. Paolo, so it was. But it was. I mean, that era. To be honest, that's all we, we talk. We, we talked just before about how you know changing of eras and and England now and England then in terms of you know these boys don't. That was your sort of period was was a change in West Ham in terms for me as well because you had so just before you started. I mean, you had Ludo and and various others, and you had. You know, when you when you started, you had you had your Alvin Martins and you yeah. had your, your real British players and mm. you know Ian Bishops and people and monks and people like that. And then during your tenure, the foreign influence came in, yeah. as you said, that Wenger came in and that foreign influence. And by the time you you left for Wimbledon, the team was totally different. You know, oh, it was it was, yeah, I mean, it was League of Nations. We used to say as a joke, um, but it really was. And you had Stan as well. Stan, from yeah, Australia. you had Stan. You had and Robbie Slater. Yeah, Robbie. Robbie well. is. Hopefully on late on tomorrow today, um, but yeah, and, and you had Slav and you had all these yeah, all these right. fantastic all these foreign based players and um, and obviously after your second sort of tar- second loan so to speak, then you signed for the club as the first British player yeah. for, under the Brosnan ruling. <clears throat> yeah, which I didn't know at the time. No, well, didn't know it was the first. Yeah, knew it was a Bosman. Yeah, and uh, that was. I mean, I'd only been transferred once before. Yeah. Before that. Like, yeah. And so it didn't feel like... Yeah, I suppose, yeah, like because you had the stra- yeah, from the Strasbourg transfer, weren't it, really? So it was basically, right, well, you're you're free to go. But, like, apart from you're free to go, it was the clubs agreed to fee the previous... Yeah. Which I didn't know what the fee was, because yeah. you didn't really find out too much about that kind of stuff. To just, right, well, you're going back to West Ham. But the funny thing was, because I'd gone and signed for them twice. Yeah. On loan, yeah, already signing the third time, basically in the same kind of way, yeah. It didn't feel any different. No, no, I can imagine. Yeah, but it was just a longer term kind of con- deal that was that was agreed, which made me actually feel part of it. I mean, if you feel more part of it because you're a loan player, you don't. Feel yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, part of it. Yeah. You know? Especially for, but I suppose even even more so for the guys. As I said to you before we started, we, we interviewed um, Sebastian Carroll, who, who was there for three month loan, and you really don't feel part of it at all, really. But mm. for a season, I suppose you can get into the season a bit more or a longer term loan. But I can see you've always got in the back of the mind. I'm going back to Strasbourg. You're always. I mean, you're. I wouldn't say under pressure. No. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're not under pressure because you're doing what you love to do. Yeah. Yeah. But I suppose you feel that you you have to try. And- Prove yourself every, I get you. every time you go out. On the flip side of that, you could be thinking, well, I wasn't thinking that because I wanted to stay in at West Ham. I wanted to stay yeah. there. You're just maybe thinking in the back of your mind, well, I've got a contract back 
where I am. So yeah. if it doesn't work out for me here, I, I cannot. You've I got can that go, sort of, I can yeah. always go go back there. But yeah. I had a year left in my contract at Strasbourg. I didn't want I didn't want to stay because the guy who took on me there, he had left. Uh, and the new guy come on. <laughs> You can sort of tell straight away whether they sure, fancy yeah, or they don't yeah, 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 And he yeah. didn't really fancy me, to be honest with you. So it was kind of, well, I'll, I'll, I'll move on. I've enjoyed my time here. Yeah. I've learned a lot. Yeah. It's made me a much better player yeah. than I had. Like, and, and I mean a much, much better player than those sure. three or four, three, two years I was yeah. out there. Just learned so much different. Of course, I all went out the window when I came back to <laughs> Britain. <laughs> because you, you lead a completely different lifestyle Yeah. again. Yeah, you know, go out there and no one would have a drink. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 even as you said, uh, yeah, and and even like after that period, I mean that that's that drink uh, not drinking culture, but that sort of British culture was still there. We interviewed Razor, we've had Trevor Sinclair, and these were a few years later, Mm. and they were still saying that Harry would let him go out for a Tuesday night drink. I don't know if he would let 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 us go out. Happy about it? No, but it was definitely a. Definitely a drinking culture. Yeah, of course, yeah. You know, that uh, I don't know what it's like now in England because I've been involved in it for so long. I imagine it's nowhere near. Nowhere near, yeah, nowhere back near. Then, but back then it was used as bonding and all that stuff. Yeah. That was the excuse, we'll go out and have a few drinks and we'll yeah. bond and all that sort of stuff. So, But it was part and parcel of, uh, strangely, just part and parcel of the lifestyle. Yeah. You know, we used to have a few beers after the match. Yeah. You, look, yeah, yeah, yeah. you didn't look forward to it. That's the wrong word. But it sort say. of like was... Yeah, but to be honest, I mean, it's 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 one of those things. I think, you know, with with football now, you're you're right. It's changed completely. You know, social media. The fact is, you know, one one dodgy tweet and they've lost three million pounds of us. You know, it's that's how it works. And I think it's 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 obviously become really professional. Not no disrespect, but it, it's a different type of professionalism now. Do you know what I mean? Football. Yeah. It's almost like they're. I don't know, like fight, not fight, I don't know, but you know, it's it's more scientific. Whereas, like back, not back in the day, but sort of, you know, the the nineties, football was fun and and fans enjoyed, and you guys were relatable as well because did I think you, you did enjoy, enjoy it more back then than yeah, you did definitely, now, definitely as a supporter, definitely. And I think for and I think talking to a lot of fans younger than maybe slightly younger than me, maybe a lot older than me, football then was it was different. It was a different. And I think that's what's a bit different now about this West Ham team now is they have a little bit of that old school mentality, team spirit, yeah. you know, no one hates, no one hates us, we don't care type thing. Yeah. Um, it's not necessarily, I mean, I've, I've always said, you know, the fact is we'll go and see, I did a, I did a, a night with McAvenny and, and Cotty and Mark Ward, like literally two weeks ago down the road and it was a sellout. Now, I don't think in 20 years' time I'm going to go to the Queen's Theatre and see Sebastian Haller mm. and Felipe Anderson mm. doing a night. <clears throat> it's not necessarily being, being foreign-based. I think you know, Paolo would sell out. You know, the yeah. candy, it's not about it, but it's just the mentality and the relationship. You know, footballers now are not necessarily as relatable as they were back then. Right, I know what you mean. Do you know what I mean? I, do, yeah. I mean, I used to live in Loughton, so obviously everyone lived in Loughton. All the footballers lived in Loughton, the Wolfham Abbey and around there. Yeah. So I would, and I always tell a story, I'd, I'd always, when I was working at Safeways, when I was about I know, 15 or whatever, um, every Friday, Shaka would go in and do his Friday big shop. Oh, was it? And Samasi Abu <laughs> and people like this. And, and But <laughs> nowadays, because money's in the game, they don't live... In you know that they live in the Canary Wharf. Do you think that's money's changed? That of course it has. Because of money. Of course it has. I would agree with you to 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 say it has. Yeah. I think when a player who's not playing anymore is complaining that money's changed the game. Yeah. That can sounds like sour grapes. Yeah. 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 That can come out the wrong way, but you know, I did do a bit of coaching with some some of the young kids and back in Northern Ireland and they asked they asked the question what, why do you want to yeah. be a footballer mm. and strangely even the young even the youngsters are saying because they want a Ferrari and yeah, yeah. stuff like that yeah. and you're like mm. well that's just the way the game's gone but yeah. this is the next generation that's coming through and you know you, you, you can't help but times are changing but whether they're changing for the good or the bad it's difficult to say but yeah. I always remember sitting on the bench at West Ham and you had to go on the pitch yeah. to get your appearance money yeah 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 yeah. you know yeah. Um, it, 
you know, okay, we were the Premiership was back then, and some players were earning decent, really good. Yeah, money. you know, no more like today. No, but by what you would call, you know, average yeah. wages, yeah, good yeah, money. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but it wasn't enough to 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 say, well, I'll sign a three-year contract like today, and I'll be set for life. Yeah, now you needed different. that money. You, you yeah. need it, and you wanted to play. You need to play to get the contract extension, or it meant something yeah. to you. Yeah, yeah. And you carried that with you because every training session then meant something because yeah. you needed to get in the team. You wanted yeah. to be in the team. You didn't not want to be in the team. I think, and I think you're right. For it's you, you don't. It's almost like you're you're playing for the next the next big contract. And as you said, hundred grand a week, two hundred grand a week, ridiculous money these guys are on. And you're right. They sell one contract and they're set for life. Really, yeah. um, I think we've you know it seems nowadays that. And it's very few players, I think. So obviously someone like Mark Noble, classic example. Mark Noble stayed at the club. Next year is his last season. 540-odd appearances, you know, Mr. West Ham. Um, very much. And, and that's that's the rarity, I think, now. You know, people move every three years. Managers move very, very quickly as well. Yeah. And so you don't have that sort of... And I think that's why there's this lack of relatability between players because they move around so quickly because it's, you know... Uh, we interviewed, I remember even, even Tony Gale... Like and Tony Gale was there for eleven years. Obviously, won the medal at Blackburn yeah, because right. of you. Yeah. Um, and uh, so it all it all works. It all works. It's all cyclical, Michael. And so he said for the eleven years he was at West Ham, ten years were testimonial years for various players, whether it was for Jeff oh, Pike really? or yeah. Wow. And and that's diff. And I think that's that's you know you don't get that. And I think there's, that's that's where a disconnect is because I think football fans now are still thinking they're back in the old school, and a player wants to play for the badge and play for the shirt. But it's a career for them now. Well, of course it is. And this Bosman, you know whether that's helped or hindered. Yeah. That anyway, all this gibberish talk no, about lo- money and stuff. No, like no, because I know the money side of it in there because no. kind of. Every time I talk to someone, we end up talking about money, and I'm thinking, "Fuck me, here we go again." I'm no, do you know money. what? I, do you know what? I think that's what people really enjoy about it. That's what you know, because it's because uh, that's what we try. I don't like because I think that's a really important thing, and it's good good to get because obviously fans have opinions. We have opinions about money and players and salaries and what people are worth, you know, and you know, people are hundred hundred and fifty million pounds, so we did, you know, and it's just numbers. But it's interesting to get a, get a player's perspective, and as you said. During your time, not just West Ham, at Wimbledon and, and at Palace, the money was coming in, as you said, Abramovich was coming in, and the, the the game did change. The game did change. It did. It did change. It changed. Changed, all right. But <clears throat> it's changed even more now. I mean, yeah. you can't tackle anymore. I mean, see some of the games you watch. Oh, I won. Yeah. Championship, yeah. you know, right? I just can't watch it. Yeah. I mean, you can't even touch anybody anymore. Nah. It's not only that you can't touch them, but the players are waiting for a slight touch and then they're just jumping on to the ground. Yeah. Uh, but something has to be done about that. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm following England, which is ex- which is <laughs> seems extremely strange <laughs> for an Irishman to yeah. say that I'm supporting England in this European Championship. There's not many the Irish men supporting them, I can tell you that much. But I am, because I think they're a great side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. they're the best yeah. team in the competition, and I yeah. think they, they deserve to win it, and I hope they do go one and win it. And by the way, my missus has got Italy in this, oh, <laughs> in this space, so it's going to be... fun in the Hughes household on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that, I mean, the Raheem Sterling penalty the other night... Well, it's never a penalty. No. And you can actually see it on the replay yeah, that yeah. it's not a penalty. No, no, so yeah. I want to know, for me, it's even, if they can't get the decisions right, when they slow the whole thing down and look at it in slow motion and they still can't get it right, yeah. what's the point of that? I know, it? yeah. I don't get it. I don't get it because it's meant to be if there's a clear and obvious error. And clearly it wasn't a penalty. <laughs> yeah, it really wasn't. What I think the flip side, is, flip side is, you know, sometimes... We always, yes. You know, I mean, every every club's the same. We, I mean, West Ham are the same. You know, this season we have a few with us, a few against us, and you know, England's away. I mean, you look at you look at Frank when he scored that scored that goal against <laughs> Germany in two thousand and six. You know, yeah, yeah, three yards behind the line. But it's it's. I think also, I mean, you, you look back when when you played at West Ham. You know, you had you had people like Julian Dix. I mean, Julian wouldn't play hardly any games with VAR now. Well, no, he would. <laughs> <laughs> he would have to. That's per- changed the way he played somewhat. His tackling. Yes. Of, of a, I remember one of the first training sessions I had at West Ham, and I bumped into Dixie. Like, he didn't wear shin pads yeah. or anything back yeah. then. And 
He won't remember it, but I remember it. And my shin hit his shin. And I swear, well, I was like, <laughs> that, that guy must have fucking steel in there. And I think he actually did have some steel in there. <laughs> Probably did, yeah. So, and I was like, I wouldn't like to play against him. I can't remember if I ever played against Julian, to be honest. For I don't think you would have. No, I don't think. No, I think you'd have gone by then. But when you moved to Wimbledon, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. Yeah, uh, I was good, but he could play. Like, he yeah, could play. Hell of a lot. But I mean, yeah, I mean, even like, I mean, to me, that was, you know, I, I just think with they. Yeah, I think it, it goes hand in hand with all the the way that you know people talk about the players being protected now and stuff. And you talk about the protected in a, in a financial sense, but also on a physical sense. Now, as you said, you couldn't, you can't tackle anymore now. And I think part of the reason is again, it's money because if a player then goes and breaks his leg and has a career in, as I don't know, like like Dean Ashton, like he got injured playing for the England squad and never played for football really again. To be honest, that's his livelihood gone now, and yeah. so. It's. I think it's. I think football doesn't matter. Money doesn't matter what, in what facet. Money. Money is 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 has changed the game, even from a technical perspective, from VAR perspective, and da da da. And obviously, then that involves betting and all that type of stuff as well. So, mm. it's uh, it's 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 a tricky one. Well, it's a tricky be interesting one. if you asked if you asked all the players, would they like to be playing now? Yeah. Well, everyone's going to say yeah because the money because of the money. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. But I mean, if you took the money out of it, and you took the characters that yeah. you were mentioning earlier yeah. on, yeah. and the guys that you played with, and the guys that you played against, mm. I wonder how many would say yes. I don't think many would. I really don't think many would, to be honest. I, I, in, in some ways, be, I would, and I'll tell yeah. you why. Because you can't tackle. Yeah. And as a, wing, a winger. As a winger, I, yeah. I, I, I'd love to be playing yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're it's not like going to get protected. any full backs nah, coming right. up and hitting you, but yeah. on the, up the ass or hitting you or rounding ram- ram- their studs down the back of your leg. You don't have to worry about that anymore. Yeah, and yeah. that was the big... As a wide man, or even as a striker, back then, that was 50% of the worry. Even the ball was coming into you. You were, you were, you were like thinking, yeah. right, I'm going to take a whack here. Yeah. But that's not there anymore. Yeah. So yeah, for that reason, I'd, I'd love to be, I'd love to play in days. But yeah. I, I don't know because you, you don't know the, you talk about the characters and, and all that sort of stuff. But I'm sure there's plenty of characters still nowadays. I think they are, but I think they're just few and far between. I think when, when I think the trouble is now is they get vilified for being a character now. So it's like some like Greedish. That, that's right. Some like Greedish, right? Mm. He's a cocky little shit. That's what he is. He's a cocky little sod. He comes on. He talk about the fouling. That's what he comes on as a professional. Someone's going to foul me. I'm going to get loads of free kicks. But back, you know, in the nineties or whatever, you look at people like Paolo and you know these guys were like, oh, you know, they were doing it all and and they were icons. But you were taught that. I remember when the France. That was the first thing you were taught. Really? That was the first thing he said to me because I wouldn't go down. Yeah. But he said, look, if you're anywhere near the box or you're in the box. Or if someone touches you, go over and make a meal of it. Because wow. Yeah, but that's yeah, what yeah, 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 I'll get that. Because you'll get they'll get a yellow card. Yeah. Or they might get sent off, or you'll get a free kick, or maybe a penalty. So that was all new to 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 me. I know mm. I don't know. So you said it was twenty five years ago, wherever it was, twenty six years ago. But that's what they were doing. Now you can call that cheating, or you can call that being smart. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, and when you yeah. watched all of when I, I used to watch the Man United, like when when they were winning the league and they go into the Champions League, and you get some French team would come over that you'd never heard of, and they go to Old Trafford and beat Man United three one. They'd play them off the park, yeah, and they would be doing that. They'd be throwing themselves to the ground and they'd be doing all that sort of stuff. So they were, they were smart. And, and now that it's starting to come in, you can call it we don't like it, but now it's coming into the English game. And you see the English players doing it now. Yeah. yeah. And you see them doing it in the European Championship. Yeah. And you're like, well, yeah, why not? Because Everyone it's else been is happening doing it. Yeah, the British yeah. game now for 30 years. Yeah. Now we're on, a, now we're on a, a level kind of playing field. Yeah. You know? Who was your... Who was So, you know, we talk about being tough, and, and, and who was your toughest... Opponent, do you reckon during uh, your time? Not just at West Ham, but general, generally in time. Saul Campbell, really? Mm. No, you'd never. The problem when you talk about other players is you play against them once every so often. Yes, and unless you're directly playing against them, yeah, yeah, you'll never know how good they they are. Yeah, 
and I was at Wimbledon, I was playing right wing and I only played there at Wimbledon because I could cut back on my left foot and whip it into the box yeah. and you maybe had uh, Robbie, Robbie yeah. arriving and, and, or a midfield arriving and your big strikers in there who were going to get in the end of things yeah. and obviously he knew that's what I was going to do because I couldn't <laughs> kick up on my right foot so he obviously knew that was part of the tactic yeah. if you like and Russ for the love of God I got no change out of that fella nah. no matter what I did really? all day and even if I thought I had two or three yards on him somehow he managed to get it back you talk about physically like him versus me there was no contest there but I thought I'll beat him for speed not a chance in hell really wow so Saul Campbell and you know what I just, I just a completely different respect for that guy after that sure and I was thinking I would not want to be playing against you week in week out but then you see what he did then you look at it from a professional player's point of view well from my own point of view I don't know what other professional players were like yeah I never ever liked to say anybody else was a good player yeah because if you said that you weren't saying they were kind of better than you you were putting them on a pedestal for exactly yeah, yeah. and it wasn't you didn't like saying saying that but then, when you finish your your playing career, when I finished your playing career, and look back on the guys you played against, yeah, I looked at what they'd achieved, and it kind of thought, well, Saul Campbell won this and this mm. and this, and he was part of that Arsenal. Career. And you sort of start to see it, start piecing it all together. Yeah, start yeah. to see what a great player. Yeah, so he was, he was. I never liked playing against Ben Thatcher either. Yeah, and played against Ben a couple of times for West Ham before I moved to Wimbledon, and he was another one. If he if you got past him. With the ball, you weren't getting past him. Yeah. He was going to yeah. bring you down or he was going to yeah. hack you or he was going to boot you. And I remember the first time I played against him and I crossed the ball. Three seconds later, I got a, cr a crack across <laughs> the ankles. And it's like what I'm talking said to you earlier on. You're worried about it then. Yeah. You're wary of it. it it's you it's know on your coming, peripheral vision, it's yeah. It's putting you off a wee yeah, bit. Yeah, you yeah. have to think about that. So he was another one I didn't like to play against. Uh, Love playing against Kenny, Kenny Cunningham. Yeah. No, at Wimbledon, Kenny was a yeah. great, great player, and I, and I, and um, but Kenny was the opposite. Yeah. Kenny wouldn't boot you. Kenny yeah. wasn't physical. Not that he couldn't. He could if he wanted to. Yeah. But he wasn't that kind of player. And when the ball came into you, knew I always knew I've got time here because yeah. I know Kenny's not going to come in and kick me. He's not that kind of player. Yeah. yeah. He's going to allow me to get at him and try and get across in. And it was 50-50. You got past them half the time yeah. and then half the time you wouldn't. But it's like a contest then. It really is a contest. It's 50-50. Do you know what I mean? You look forward to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I enjoy it. You love those kind of matchups. Yeah. So you did. You yeah. love to go out and think, right, I'm going to get the ball here and I'm going to try and take you on or, uh, yeah. or I'm going to get past you or I'm not. And that was all my job was, but that's kind of learned that later on in life, as we talked about, was to get past the fullback and put the ball in the box. Yeah, that was that's that was that's it. Job. And if yeah. I wasn't doing that, I wasn't doing what I was being yeah. paid to do. Yeah, yeah, no, I you get know? that. And his job was to stop me from doing that. Simple. Yeah. That was it. Then obviously working up and all that stuff that went along. And then what that. happens when? Because obviously you know you sort of Ben Thatcher and people like that, and obviously then you go and play with them at Wimbledon. Do you play Ben at Wimbledon? Yeah, I play. He so played, so yeah, is are you, are you, so you, is it almost like? <sighs> Well, there it was. Yeah. Because the full-backs had to defend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was the thing about going to Wimbledon. Yeah. You didn't... You did what you were supposed to do. The full-back was a defender. Yeah. And the wingers weren't coming back. And I remember numerous occasions where I was coming back to kind of... you know, Back in those days, it was like you, were, you weren't you were a winger, you were a wide midfielder. Yeah. So you were up and down the pitch and you had to stop. You were basically playing against the other wide man mm. and your own full-back. Yeah, so yeah, you yeah. had to stop that wide man from getting the ball. Yep. But he would never, he always just said, you say, fuck off, up the pitch. <laughs> go on, off you go. And, I don't, and, want, I don't and, want you back here. That's my man. That's my and man. I'll, I'll deal with him. And you were like, oh, okay, this is nice. great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, but he was, he was a good player. He was quite Yeah, he was a good player, wasn't he? He didn't, he didn't have to worry about anybody. No. And obviously, yeah. leaving West Ham for Wimbledon, how did that happen? How did that happen? Uh, I wasn't in the team too no. much because Stan Stan had come in Stan Lazaridis yeah, yeah, yeah. had come in and Stan was playing on, on the left side yeah and he was doing he was doing well Stan yeah. strong he was quick he got plenty of crosses in the box yeah he did he, yeah, yeah, yeah. he was a handful to play against yeah. and I was on the bench yeah and 
you, you sort of you see the writing on the wall. Yes, no, I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. See what's sorry, right, Well, I'm not, unless Dan gets injured or unless yeah. I, I go on. Or, but I played all over the park for West Ham. Apart, the only two positions, that, the only position I didn't play was centre back. Yeah. And goalkeeper. Yes. I played everywhere else. Wow. And yeah. loved playing everywhere else. Right back for Storm Stream Chiefs and I really enjoyed playing. But anyway, that's besides the point. But Stan had come in and he was doing good. Doing better than good. And uh, Harry just called me in the office one day and says, look, Wimbledon have come in and made a bid for you. Yeah. And I was like, no, I'd never really... Never thought about leaving. Yeah, 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 Leaving, you know, it wasn't like that. You weren't considering leaving. You were trying to get back in the team. Yeah. And uh, so I went and spoke to them. Just went, OK, well, I'll go and, go and speak to them, yeah. you know. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, that's yeah. what you did. If someone came in for you, you went and spoke to them. And I went and spoke to Sam and Joe Kinnear. And uh, yeah, just enjoyed talking to them. And it was nice to feel that you were... Yeah, because they came in for you. They wanted you. Wanted yeah, yeah, you. yeah, and yeah. That's yeah, a yeah. part of football. I yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I think, strangely, funny, as a, from a kid growing all the way up, Every match, especially if you want to make it, it's a test. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're always trying to impress someone. You're always wanting someone to say, oh, he's doing well or he's a good player because that's what you want to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, so Mitt Sam said to me, and this is what swung it, to be honest. I mean, I, I love playing for Joe. Joe Kinnear was great yeah. for me. And I went to Wimbledon. I went off the rails a wee bit, to be perfectly honest with you. Well, a lot. Uh, but they were always great with me and, uh, Sam says to me that night funny enough he says look I want you to come and play football yeah for Wimbledon he probably said this to everybody yeah but he says uh, whatever's going on in your private life your personal life that's, that's my true. problem yeah he said you come and speak to me about that he said I want you on the football pitch and that's what you do for me everything else I take care of nice sort of the time Wow, no one's ever said that to me before. Yeah. You always felt like you were kind of on your own or you were dealing with an agent who was yeah. dealing with the club. So it just felt, all right, well, I'm not getting in, I'm not playing at West Ham. I love the club and I love being around the club. Yeah. I really enjoy my time there, but I'm not getting in. And these guys are saying they want me to come and play. It's it's Wimbledon, it's the crazy gang. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. an experience, if nothing else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why not? Yeah. So I said I'll go and uh, went in and seen Harry, I think, the next day. And uh, I said, I'm going to go to, <laughs> going to, go to Wimbledon. And then he went, and he says, what are you going, to go, what are you going there for? <laughs> you, you, you just, just me, yeah, you just said. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he said, listen, he says, I think because they were looking to bring Trevor in at the time as well. Yes. I think they were trying to send yeah, sign Trevor. Yeah. Which was a good signing for West Ham. Oh, yeah. yeah very, so I could yeah. understand, I could understand that getting the money from me and I hadn't cost them anything because I'd come with yeah, a Bosman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like, well, here's, for, yeah. for a freebie uh, so as we had sense and we shook hands and yeah and that yeah. was the end of it and as you said I think you know, you've said before you know it is about being wanted it's about wanting to play football as well we've, we've interviewed loads of say guys who were really good youth team players at West Ham but never made it really maybe a few subs mm. Uh, it's like Hodges the Hodges as well he was saying and is he and played people like that and, and they've gone and had like Two, three hundred game careers playing for Scunthorpe and Swansea, and they just they could have easily signed a, a contract and, and done the hundred grand and stayed there and not bothered about. But they wanted to be around the first team and play in the first team and, and play football. And you, you wanted to start. You don't want to be off the bench all the time. Mm. It makes perfect sense. No, you don't ever want to be. You don't ever want to. You you don't feel like you're not you're involved. Yeah. Regardless if you've had ten brilliant games in the first team, as soon as you get left out for those one or two games, you don't feel part of it. Yeah. Anymore. Yeah. You know, and it's you know, and but some guys probably could live with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't live with it. No, no, no. Because I was too serious, and that's the, way, the only thing I wish I'd changed, Ross, about my career was to be would, would have been less intense. Sure. Or less serious. You can probably yeah. tell by this talking about it. I'm quite intense, but uh, that was my issue. I couldn't let things go. Yeah, yeah. You know, couldn't. I don't know where it's because it's a Northern Ireland thing or whatever, but too too gobby saying stupid things at the, the wrong the wrong time because reactive so that's I wished I hadn't li lived it as yeah. much as I wished I could have been a bit more relaxed and a bit more chilled out and some other, some guys were some guys were really chilled out and they probably had 
more enjoyable career yeah. because of it. You know, so if I could change anything, that would be the only sure. thing I would change. Yeah, saying. that makes sense. Although obviously, you know, movies Liverpool, the Wimbledon rather then obviously moving to Crystal Palace means you're not just out there for the playoff final. But we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> don't going to talk about that. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot about that. That was a strange day. That was. But not just for you, for you and Ian, because obviously Ian was on. The, Ian was the manager at the time of Palace, and 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 you obviously West Ham, almost a hundred games for the club. And Ian, I, how many games did he? Well, that oh, was his second spell, wasn't it? When, yeah. When he came, when he came back, and uh, I can't remember any games Ian must have. I remember he I mean, he had tough enough times at West Ham. So yes. The fans took to him for, and then and then. They didn't, and then they did again. Yeah. So it was it wasn't easy for him. But he was a West Ham fan. Big, big yeah, man. I think he is. But I, I mean, yeah, I mean, he must have. Made, I mean, yeah, he's always been. He's always been. He was famous for scoring an own goal. That's, that's right. That's, I think that was just <laughs> one of his last games. It would have been, yeah. And I felt really sorry for him because obviously we drew, we drew them in the cup. You know, this season, uh, Stockport, and I thought I could just imagine Ian relaxing at home. Watching the FA Cup draw, Stockport, West Ham. Oh but God! Lost. But think of the royalties. If I could, you know, think of that goal came from. <laughs> Ian made uh, ninety-five appearances. Did he? 95. Yeah. So Is you beat by two. Two spells. Yeah, uh, yeah. In in, 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 in complete. Uh, yeah, because he had two spells. Ninety-one, ninety, ninety-one. And he came back from ninety-five through to ninety-eight. So yeah, so yeah, ninety-three. It's not as many as you. Well, there you go. There you go. But uh, I'll tell you one thing about. Ian Dowie and they talk about all the managers you've played under yeah like I mean Harney and Joe and all all the ones I've played under Ian Dowie probably gave me three years on my career really yeah just because he's intense. So I watched one of the interviews you did for Palace the other day. We talked about the intensity of the training. And stuff. Everything about him. Yeah. And listen, so, me and him had <laughs> good relationships and not so good at times. Like every, yeah. like everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really Like a love hate relationship a lot of the times. But I really respect that what he was trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To achieve, and I think. Well, I'm not sure, but I imagine that even though I was difficult to manage for him, I yeah. was a fucking nightmare to manage. It must have been a nightmare for him, looking back. But I think he liked what I brought to the table in terms yeah. of my intensity. Yeah. And we were very similar in, in terms of that. And that's the one thing with Ian, and I'm surprised uh, that he hasn't, someone hasn't taken a a, a, chance, hundred, a yeah. chance on him because he's 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 well worth it. Yeah. And I would say that out of all the managers I've played under, that I wish that I played under him when I was a youngster. Yeah. Because he'd have got a hold of you and said, "Fucking ways up." Yeah. You know. Yeah. As he did with our team, and and it wouldn't just be me would be saying that. I would say there'd be maybe probably twenty guys. Yeah. yeah. Who could easily stay that at Palace yeah. that year? You yeah. Know? So. But you know, I played with him for many, many years, many, many years, and it was just get the ball up to Ian. Yeah. Get it up to him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Either his head, his chest, or whatever. And he took some. He must have. He took some abuse over the years from centre backs and stuff like that. Oh, there. of but, course. You know, he, yeah. uh, he was under. He was underrated. Big Ian. He was underrated for what he brought to the table. You know what? I mean, he didn't try and do anything he couldn't do. That was his yeah. Thing. Well, actually, he did. <laughs> he did. Try, did try and do things he couldn't do. But uh, you know, I enjoy playing with him. Played with him Northern Ireland. Played from a uh, West Ham and play and played under him. Yeah. And I enjoy playing under him. I yeah. have to say, no disrespect. No, yeah. yeah. To, 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 and, and I really enjoy playing under him. And I'd like to see him back somewhere because he he could do a job. Yeah, well, he's always good. I always found him as a very, really good pundit as well. Um, he did yeah. Soccer Saturday and stuff like that. And, and obviously, yeah, you, you mentioned the chicky run and stuff like that. As a winger, you know, it's one of those things where you tend to associate yourselves with that side of the pitch. Well, that left side. In that left that side, left yes. Side. I, I first game at West Ham, I was six, he was left back and I was left wing. And we, I think we actually played Man City, funny enough. Yeah. One of my old, I think it was, yeah, yeah. I was playing against Nicky Summerby on the... I don't know why, but just Nicky, I just wanted to boot him. And I think he just wanted to boot me too. So it was a bit of a, it was like two guys who were the pretty unphysical, I would say. 
but for some reason the they're on it. They're on it that day. So I don't know whether that was because of the chicken run or not, but <laughs> probably was. <laughs> just you just all this atmosphere, just osmosis, you know, like not the sun, but just like this hostility. Yeah, gone back from gone from the French game where you couldn't touch anybody no, to like, the British game where you could break up on. And I suppose having Julian Dix backing you up as well. Oh, that, helped. that does help. That, that does yeah. help. That does help. Bless him. Right, <laughs> right. We'll, we'll, we'll come because everyone likes to. We do see elevens, obviously. You know, uh, everyone we have on the channel, we, we put an eleven together. I know you've got forty in your head, so <laughs> we'll so, so we'll have a go. I just don't want to leave anybody out. <laughs> well, what the way we is. do it, the way people do it, have done it, is by notable mentions. So they'll say. Uh, okay, I play with da 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 da. I love them all, but for me, da da da. Do you know what I mean? Just so you don't miss anyone else. No, I'll not. I'll not. I don't. Well, I don't think I'll miss. I'll try not to, like you say. But I mean, if you're going to start, then I'd have to go big Ludo. You got to be Ludo. You got to yeah. be Ludo. I'm going to make notes for so that Man United match. Yeah, and many other times as well. Not just that, but that was <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. And that's the only thing that I'll, I remember from that game is those last five minutes because I was on the bench and I'd, I'd been taken off and maybe the last 15 minutes was those saves that Ludo made. I don't really even remember much about nah. my own goal yeah, but yeah, I yeah. remember those saves and it was just crazy. But what well, he was a... He was a proper... Where was he, where was he from? Czech, Czech? Yeah, it's Czech Republic. Although the, the famous song, he says he's from near Moscow. But, but, oh, yeah. it, but it's no, but it's because it, it didn't really work. Oh. As, a, as a tune so you know but I think <laughs> yeah. West Ham I think I think actually Moscow was closer to the Czech Republic than it was to London right. uh, or so something like that but yeah but yeah Czech Republic came over yeah big shows to fill we had uh, obviously Phil Parks before you know legendary West Ham yeah. goalkeeper um, probably one, he, one of the first foreign imports as well and, but the, he, you know, he back then you were looking at no disrespect of foreign goalkeepers yeah. but they were a different to British goalkeepers yeah 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 Ludo, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say he was a foreign goalkeeper no. he was more like a British goalkeeper, yeah, like yeah, a British yeah. build, and they yeah. come for crosses and made saves and stuff like that. Yeah. And wasn't great with the feet, probably. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> he could run. I think. He yeah, I mean, he was always run. one of those. I mean, I, I obviously he was he was a legend, but I always you talk about how you know people in, in crowds and stuff. My 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 granddad always used to call him Loopy Ludo, so I've always just still known him as Loopy so Ludo. Like yeah, Ludo. so yeah, but oh yeah, but you, you, I think actually, I think Man United tried to buy him. Well, they were when they were looking at getting Schmeichel's replacement oh, because right? it was almost like well, he always does us in anyway. If we get him, in, he can't, he can't, fuck, can't he can't stuck us to win the title. But yeah, no, Ludo, lovely bloke yeah. and uh, very quiet man. Yeah, he was very yeah. good, quiet man. Uh, but if he lost the bat, you knew about it. Yeah, to be quite honest with you. So you didn't want to get on the wrong side of him. Nah, because he'd batter you. Well, he would have battered me. But and we do alright with Czech boys at the moment. We've seen Fe- we see Czech and Sufal and yeah, well, they're, 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 they're good. I know they've done well. In the, they've done well in the. They years should. As well. Yeah, they got a good team. They got a good team. Yeah, so we'll go a big little one there. Yeah, go on in. Uh, well, right back. I mean, God. I mean, Timmy Breaker would have played the most games at right back yeah. while I was there, but then Potsy would have played. He would. A load of, and Kenny. Kenny, and Kenny yeah. Would played. So the three of them would have played right back. I don't think I'm missing any. I don't think you are. Out, but I don't think you are. Listen, they all brought something different. Yeah. This is it. I mean, and I didn't spend enough time at West Ham seeing these guys. I know you said about a fella who stayed only a few months. Yeah. Uh, but they all brought some different qualities yeah. to the to the, to it. I have to say, but I suppose Timmy, Timmy would have been because Potsy could play centre back. Yeah, and, and Kenny, uh, Timmy would have played a lot more games. And he did. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, I suppose yeah. that I'd have to go with Timmy. Yeah, but you're going to see Kenny in a minute, anyways. <laughs> I'll go with Kenny. Yeah. So he can buy the coffees. I mean, it's I picked him. We'll put, we'll put Kenny in just because I'm just thinking. I think he goes, see Kenny down. He'll say, oh, did yeah. you pick it right back? Uh, you, of course. Um, but yeah, no, I think you're right. And again, they've all been different things. I, I, I think actually, particularly talking about the Czech boys now, Sue Fowl very much is, I, I see him as sort of the modern day, that's a horrible thing, it's a modern day, but, you know, Timmy Breaker, you know, he's a real sort of like workhorse. Timmy, I mean, we've had him on, I love Tim, he's a lovely bloke, and and he would always be a seven out, six, seven yeah, out of ten, yeah, do you know what yeah. I mean? Not spectacular, but would always be in that, you know, you, you could guarantee, and 
particularly like Sue Fell is job. Now. Tommy did his did his job. Nothing nothing fancy. No. You knew what you were gonna get, like yeah. you say, week in and week out. Yeah, yeah. With Tommy. But you did with Potsy too. Yeah, he did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, different. Yeah, yeah. And you can you can you did with Kenny, Kenny as well. Kenny, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I mean Kenny's like similar to he said he played Kenny must have played about half a dozen positions as well, really. Oh, he did, he did. I mean we went to uh it was a West Ham kind of thing and we went out, it was a few years ago now, we went to the Rome Stadium. Yeah. yeah. Was it where England was it some team played there? I can't remember who played there the other night. And then anyway, on the WhatsApp group, all the boys are saying, Oh, do you remember we were there? We were about the wee Hodgie was there. He came out and played on it, yeah. And uh, what an experience! Yeah. That stadium it was like it was probably like a third full, yeah. But still, you've and been we, there, and, and, and it, it, it was just great. And we had the West Ham gear and all. I don't know why I've gone there, but anyway, Kenny played in that, yeah. Kenny played in that, and he, he wasn't any different. Yeah, to how he was when he was playing, he was still in really good shape, and he could still play, and he just looked the same and ran the same, and so. But brilliant, I love listen, it. Listen, I don't know. Well, just you choose one of those. We'll put, I'll put Kenny in. Yeah. I think Kenny needs because it's like, I mean, it's good. To, uh, I like, I like it when there's. I mean, yeah, Tim played a lot of games, but Tim gets a lot. Of, you know, Kenny, Kenny deserves time to shine. <laughs> that's what I mean. That's why I love. I think you know. Let's put Kenny in. Let's put Kenny in. All right, we'll put, we'll put Kenny just in to keep him happy. Uh, right, we'll put Kenny in. Go on in. Let's. All right, we'll go. Let's go left back then. I reckon that'd be an easier one. Well, you could say be. that. All right, could be, but yes. You say that. I mean, I mean, obviously, Julian played there most of the time when I was there. Uh, but Keith, Keith, of Rowan, course, yeah, yeah. And then Julian went left side centre back. He did, yeah. Where he could play there too, yeah, and he did well there. He did. He could for his, He wasn't like was about five ten, but he could jump and he could head the ball. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. But uh, really did well there too. I like playing with both of them, but I suppose uh, you would have to say Dixie. You'd yeah, we'll put, Dixie. put Dixie in. You know, it's only because Rowley hasn't returned my te- my calls yet. Oh, and he hasn't returned my text. He hasn't returned text. Rowley was rubbish. And I really want Rowley. Just anymore. saying, he's just not even on the bench. Not even on the bench. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> And he'll be like, oh no, he's he's, he's oh, been selected. Yeah. He's Rest been selected. <laughs> <laughs> first in. All right, so we put okay. So two. Right, centre half. Then first centre half. Then first centre half. When that was, you know, big Alvin. I was lucky enough to play with him for yeah. maybe a season, a, se- yeah. a season and a half. Yeah. And uh, listen, he was hard to describe. I was just a nice big. Quiet man, yeah. But he, he lives around the corner. Does he live around the corner? Does yeah, he? Yeah, really? yeah, yeah, he lives oh, around it. But he was just, just a, just a great player too. Yeah, you know, you know what I mean. But I, I remember him more for his kind of, just the way he was, and his, his, just as a fella. Yeah, and his leadership qualities, and I'd love to. I'd, lo- I'd love to, I didn't get the chance to see him in his prime, but what yeah. I did see was good enough, I have yeah, to say. He was yeah, brilliant. Yeah. So I, I put Alvin in, and yeah. he's a West Ham le- hero legend as he well, is. so he's brilliant. He is, when I play. We'll put Big Alvin. We'll put Big Alvin. Okay, who's going to partner though? Well, again, you could go Potsy, you could go Slavin, I yeah. could go Big Mark Reaper. Mark Reaper. Who yeah. doesn't, you know, Mark Reaper was brilliant. He was, yeah. He was an excellent big, yeah, big yeah. player, but he was, like, I remember one of the matches that, uh, I don't know if you've heard this story or not, but the the, the foreign defenders defend it against their man. That's all they did. You need to go. You no, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> Trouble he's watching, you can never switch off, he'll message you. Yeah, so. They, they, they like to defend man, man against man, and they yeah. had their man, and it was usually the striker, and that was it, and they marked them for the game, and one yeah. of the games, we had a corner four, and anyway, they, the other team broke away and yeah. Reeves basically marked his man and the winger just ran in with a ball and put it in the back of the net Reeves didn't go and close him down because that was his that's that his was job that was his thing was thinking, that's yeah. it. So, but I suppose I'll go with Slavin because he was left sided he yeah. was left footed and, uh, and I've got a big man on the other side so that's, yeah, that's good yeah. that's, that's nice yeah. yeah that's good that's decent that's decent and obviously big Slav coming back as a manager as well and, and yeah. stuff like that yeah, he's done well. Thanks yeah, laugh, so he has. Yeah, they always had that kind of. Do does that? I mean, obviously, you, you, you mentioned Dowie and Slav and uh, and people like that. Do they when they're at training? You know, do you think you know these guys are going to be? You know, not like afterwards. Maybe when they become a manager, you think, oh, he's, he's actually he's going to be a good manager, or is there, certain, is there a certain presence they have, or? Uh, yes, I know. Yeah, some of them that not ones we're talking about but some have gone on to be managers where you think you know, really never yeah, be a manager how's that worked out yeah but, uh, 
Slavin always had presence. Yeah. You know, he was always respected. Uh, mm. And Ian always had presence too mm. around, around the dressing room. But I would say they weren't scared to speak their mind. Yeah. And some people speak their mind and they speak a lot of crap. But these boys, what they said made sense. Yeah. People listened. Yeah, you know, so that's what I mean. People, there's people listening, isn't it, to the thing? Right, anyway, people have to so, <laughs> with our dog interlude. Um, okay, let's let's go into midfield then. Right, let's go into midfield. What are we doing? This is where it started to get a wee bit trickier. I'm going to go through every single player that ever played for West Ham while I was there, and you'll be like, <laughs> "And you know what? If you miss one, that. if you miss one, one of those people watching it will say he forgot about." Da -da 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 -da. You know, <laughs> they say, "I love him, I love him." Right, you better keep me right as mm. well then. Uh, right. Let's start in the left wing. Start left that, wing. That's going to be probably the easiest yep. position. Uh, and as as I think. Stan was very effective. Stan Lazarides yeah. was extremely effective in the left wing while I was there. He was good at what he did. Uh, PC, yeah, he had balls about him as well. Stan, you know, he would, he would, he wouldn't, he wouldn't shirk it. Yeah. So stick Stan in. Yeah, we'll stick Stan in. Old laser. And there was a bit of a yeah, because actually you, there was there was a sort of a bit of an Australian contingent really. Then there was you had slates, you had Steve, you had Stan, you had Chris. Chris Coyne as well, do you remember? Yeah, Bitcoin, yeah, yeah Big Coyne as well, centre back, yeah. young lad. So there was like this sort of Australian sort of quartet of them. Was, so yeah, there was. There was. Right. So I put Laz, I put Laser in. Uh, I'm going to leave the right wing for a minute, Ross, because okay. I'm, I'm I'm struggling on the right wing. No you'll, have to, you'll have to kind of. I'll have a think. Remind me on the right wing. No kid, okay. Robbie's the only one I can think of on the right wing at the minute. I know I'm missing some. We'll come back to that. Right, well, the centre midfield, there was so many to choose from. I mean, Bish, I was at Man City with Bish when I was a kid. Yeah. And learnt so much watching Bish play yeah. at Man City when they yeah. beat Man United 5 1 that day. You probably do remember that, and I was so a kid. Watching Bish that. did tell me several times about that. I did, I yeah. surprised. <laughs> but that was a hell of a Man City team, big Paul Lake and all. He got unfortunately got injured but that was a hell of a Man City team that Bish played in and Bish pulled all the strings like back yeah. then so he did and I remember playing against them as a kid reserves versus first team and different different world like different but you learn so much just yeah, watching yeah, yeah. what he did and how he moved the ball and he moved on to Everton so I never got a chance to play with him because I never broke through into the team while he yeah. was in the team so yeah. when I came to West Ham and I knew he was there I was kind of thinking I can't wait to play with you. Bish, because yeah. I know he'll get the ball yeah, and he'll get give it out to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so, and then there was there was Monkey, who was a similar player, I have to say, to Bish, who surprised me because yeah. when I first when I went to West Ham, I'd never really heard of Monkey. No, you know it was like yeah, yeah, yeah. You know who's this nutter? Yeah, the who's, yeah exactly. Yeah, who's this nutter? Things. Exactly. Yeah. But the uh, monk was similar. He would play, he could play. He went and got it off the centre backs. And this was before yeah. this was before midfielders were going back and getting it off yeah, the centre backs. Yeah, they were so ahead they of their really time. Doing it then. So they were going back and they were picking the ball up the centre backs, and that's why Harry liked them to play anyway. But they could both do it. Uh, and then there was Hutch. Yeah, Don Hutch, big, and who scored some unbelievably important yeah. goals for West Ham. He did. He did keep us up. The two he scored against Liverpool. He he could always get you a goal from the mid, mid, middle of the park. Uh, and then there was uh, the hard man. I can't. Oh, my fucking <laughs> so oh no, I can't believe I can't remember. The uh, Manny's Brentford. Uh, Martin Allen, Mad Dog. Martin, the Mad Dog. Martin Allen, who was there, who was a completely different kind of player. Very much so. Those boys who give you the physicality in the middle of the park and get stuck in, and you knew what you're always going to get with Martin too. So, but I have to say, I, I played mostly with. With Bish, yeah, and 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 Monk, yeah, Monk A, and 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 they were both always kind of getting on the ball, and Hutch was in and out. To be fair, at the time, but those those two were great. Yeah, I mean the thing about as I said, I remember we interviewed both of you, both obviously, and I think Bish was, I think Monks was saying actually, he says that during that. When they, were, when they were playing together as a, as a pair, we fan, he said we fancied ourselves against anyone, mm. whether it was Vieira, whether it was Keane. Yeah, we'd we'd have a go, and we would we might we might not be as as physically dominating, but we bloody have a whatever go. And, and to be fair, they didn't shirk it. Nah, didn't shirk it. Yeah, you'd say Bish, Bish was more of a. 
I'd say Bish was more. What's the word? I'd say Monk had more of a more of an, an aggressive. Yeah, he. Thing. Yeah, and I think I think that aggressive. I mean, I mean, Monk. To be honest, Monk's came in as a very much like a cultured player. Obviously, he was at Swindon with Glenn Glenn Hoddle, and then Glenn moved to. Chelsea and he would just take Monks with him mm. um, and he was more cultured and I think when he joined West Ham he was more very similar to Bishop in terms of you know a slightly ahead of their time I think really and then I think as the years came I think that then Monks' aggression came a bit more to the forefront maybe it was because he was around the chicken run too long um, and then, then he became getting older yeah he's like getting older and so he would be the guy coming on the touchline and people would literally be counting for seconds how long he'd get booked is that you right? know, yeah. Like right. I remember a few fans going, "All right, Monks is on one, two, three, four, like thirty seconds." You know, and it was always a bit of a joke, running joke with the fans. I but remember playing against them a couple of times. I don't think I ever played against them directly when I went, went to Wimbledon, but played in a, in a couple of matches. But we would have had real physical, yeah, midfield players yeah. like Robbie Earl and yes, people like that there. So it wasn't. It was never a game of football. Yeah. It was always more of a scrap, so you yeah. tended not to see that side of the game. That was always the ca- it's always the case with Wimbledon, wasn't it? Everyone assumed they were, you know. I remember we interviewed Mad Dog, we interviewed Martin, and I asked him what his favourite West Ham match was for playing for West Ham, and he said it was against Wimbledon. Um, like, and I was like, this was I can't remember it was nineteen something, nineteen ninety something. Like that. And I said, was why? Four three was it? It was the, no, it was the one. It was one basically. He says I can't remember the score, but I remember it because we had eleven man like 22 man fight <laughs> and then and then it all broke down and then the it, the ref played on ball went to Dennis Wise and Julian basically kicked him up about six foot in the air and just walked straight off knowing he'd been sent off <laughs> and he was like that's why it was my abiding memory of, of that game I love it it was funny oh mad dog but yeah it was I mean yeah it was we were never I mean those guys were never physically dominating in the way that Robbie Earl was or mm. you know later on at West Ham's career or Mark Vivian Fowey big like big boys they weren't big boys but no. they were um, I think they like got big balls though yeah yes and that was that was a thing and you know what and it was a couple of times when and that was the thing about Bish now everyone went through a tricky period yeah at West Ham yeah, yeah and and like we say, the chicken run let you have it if they didn't think that you were performing the way you should have been. Yeah. But I can never remember Ian Bishop getting his stick. Well, they did. But yeah. I can remember him never once not going and trying to get on the ball. Gotcha. Like yeah, yeah, I get regardless you. Regardless of how badly he was playing yeah. or regardless of how, if the fans were on his back yeah. or not, he never shirked it. Never once. Yeah. And that's, you know, you can kick run about kicking people's fucking easy. Yeah, that's the easy part of the game. Yeah, yeah. But going and getting the ball when when you're getting that's that's the hard part, yeah, and that's for Bish never ever shirked it. No, nah. or no. Monkey to be fair. No, Monk's never did. Yeah, yeah, neither did. I know what you mean. Right, okay. So speaking of shirking, right, right wing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a look. I'm having a look because because my one, my memory goes now with, with positionings. To be honest, it's like right. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's get let's get your. Uh, I've got my, my little stats thing here. Where are you? There are you. Right, OK, let's have a look at some of the players you would have played with. Right, let's have a look. So, Matty Holmes. My was left side, though. Left side. Matty, Matty Rush. Do you know what? Oh, Rushy. Matty, Rushy, yeah. Rushy, yeah. But uh, Matty Holmes, he crossed the ball that, for that Man United goal. So I should have... Danny Williamson, he was more... Danny Williamson. Danny, was, Danny was more midfield. More midfield, wasn't he? I about Danny in the middle of the park, actually, Danny. Mm. Was, but he wasn't really... Because I'm just look at some of his names, brilliant. Hugo Porfirio. Oh, we, the wee small, <laughs> the wee small man, the, wee small boy. the man he who, could, he the man could who play ne- too, so we could. The man who never saw snow until he played Wrexham. <laughs> he could play. I tell you what, he could play. It was a stage where we were just giving him the ball, and he was just doing what he wanted. God, you play with some players. Just looking at some of these. Uh, Yeah, Berkovic you played with. Yes. You you forgot about Steve Lomas as well, didn't you? Oh, shit. Do you know what though? Funny story, right? I interviewed Davy oh, James. I, but I didn't play very. No, you didn't play a lot with Lobie. Didn't play. No, you didn't play a lot with Lobie. We interviewed. Um, we interviewed Davy James like Sorry, a while Lobie. ago. Sorry, Lobie. <laughs> we interviewed Davy James a while ago, and he gave his eleven. And the next day, he was doing some stuff for the club, and I knew some of the guys he was working with, and he was going for these eleven. And someone went, "You forgot Paolo Di Canio." He went, "Oh my God, I forgot Paolo Di Canio." <laughs> <laughs> so you know what I mean. So, it's easy done. Easy done. I mean, easy you know, done. it was a long time ago. Yeah, we said we've, we've said slates as well. Uh, Robbie Slater, you would have played with. Just sort of again, just picking a few teams and see what we got. The right wing wasn't great. I mean, no. Rushy, Rushy. To be fair to Rushy, when he was he was on the right side when I first got to the club, and he was on fire. 
yeah. at that stage. He was unplayable. Yeah. It's quick, strong, direct. Yeah. Rushy was great. So we'll put Rushy stick Rushy in. Stick Rushy. Simply because he was a great athlete and he had everything you needed to have to be a to play yeah. in that position and he was there when I first got there yeah. we hopefully get him on soon because I'm really he'd be really because Jonesy's sorting out with me actually but um, for me because he was a player who as you said was just just had it just so had it and then stopped I, I can't remember what happened he retired, he retired at 26 I think did he not get injured uh, I, I, I think he has a, might, maybe an injury but his, his wife if I remember his wife was, was a tennis player and I think he then like became she, she was getting her LTA la, the ladies tennis associate and I think he then and he went to university went to uni and, and you know he was an intelligent boy yeah he, he's a teacher now so he was um, an intelligent boy and football even though he enjoyed playing it I don't know if he enjoyed if he enjoyed it do you, I know what you mean yeah 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 I think that's part of the reason but I'd love to talk to him about it because I think it's really yeah, interesting because be you said say. yeah all right we'll put a brush in mm. god bless him right okay uh Forwards. Well, <laughs> well. No, I'm going to go with TC, obviously. Yeah. As one, I don't even have to think about that one. No. I mean, he could score from anywhere and did. Yeah. Uh, great guy too. I like TC. Yeah, he's, he's a lovely bloke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, really had good conversations with him when I first went to West Ham. Uh, as a partner. You know what I mean? Yeah, big hearts. Yeah. Played with him. Big doubt. Big Ian. Like I said. Jerome Boer. Do you remember? Jerome yeah. God rest his soul. Yeah. 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 And, and, and a big Jerome, but extremely talented, big player, and he's yeah. brilliant. I thought he was yeah. great when he was at West Ham, but. Uh, wow. Wow. I can't uh, Steve Jones Jonah who played in that thing he was just because he'll be watching he, he was out in, he was out in, uh, in Italy, Italy yeah. with us playing uh, but he but Big Jonah didn't look any different still quite does, strong does he still, he still, he still don't look no difference size and same shape no difference different. and his son's doing really well I know I know his son's doing really well for the. <laughs> it's nice because a lot of those players I mean someone like West Ham had a, we had a few for a while obviously we had Steve we had, we had, we had Dan on, Dan Potts with West Ham and he's, he's Steve's son and Freddie's just signed a um, he's just signed a pro contract now and and Monks had George in, in there and um, Jonesy's boys doing well and it's nice because you see this sort of like on. yeah so these are things I, I wouldn't know about yeah I don't know they were all, all the youngsters but yeah I mean that, that, yeah I think Dan plays at Luton now but he, I think he made a few first team appearances for us but yeah, yeah. Um, but yes uh, so TC I mean all big all big guys all big any guys any ever left out there I mean Hearts and Kits Kitson Paul Kitson another one yeah Another one that was a good partnership. Pal- Palais Futre, uh, they played ten, but you know. Palo, what I mean? <laughs> Palo, you could tell Palo was a world class player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've never seen anybody move over ten yards as quickly as Palo Futre wow. over ten yards. Not, no one could get near him, but he was sort of at the end of his he was at the career end. then, and I don't think he really cared too much either, to be honest with Florian you. Florian Madachoy, Madachoy, another one. Yeah, great qualities. Yeah. Great qualities, and I think he scored a couple of really important goals. He did. Man United scored against Man United. And you know, all these players, you know, when they, they came and fitting into the British style, yeah. having never played, it's tough. It is, yeah. It's funny. As I said, I've been, I've been doing a few, we, I do sort of retrospective things. So we're looking at people, we looked at Darnie, we looked at Marco Bugas, yeah. we looked at people like this. And it's players' welfare is was non existent there, non-existent. really. Non existent. And so we had um, we, knew, we had a guy called Javier Margas, a Chilean guy. We signed him after the World Cup, first day of training. We gave him a car, and they gave him. A, he went. He was. He lived in Loughton. He went up the M11 and said down the M11. So he ended up at, at, at Stansted Airport. And you know things like this, and like his wife and his and and uh, you know he ended up basically fleeing the country and going <laughs> to play in, to go to go back to Chile, but. Players' welfare was not there. Boogers no. was the same. No. Marco was the same. Um, That's a big part of it. Yeah. I mean, you think about it. I mean, it's... I know that was a big part, not to hark on about going to Strasbourg, but that was one thing that they did. Car, apartment. Yeah. And 
drove you around the city and drove you back to yeah. three or four times to make sure you knew what you were, you were doing. But the yeah. thing about the foreign players when they came to West Ham at that time, they probably couldn't have come to British football at worst time because basically after the first training session, they're shit. Yeah. The, you know, the superstars. Yeah. Like Radichaya. Yeah. You need at least a year to settle down and to show, show what you can do. Mm. But these boys were like, they didn't, they didn't get the time time nah. to settle and it was difficult for them because the game was much more physical yeah. but you could tell you could tell looking in as a player yeah. that these boys had some class yeah. because they would do something in training some day or so you would just be like whoa yeah. that's unbelievable and you could see that in terms of wave length the problem was that we weren't on, on the same wavelength yeah. Yeah, 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 as yeah. some of these guys yeah. not because we were higher, but because they were higher. Yes, I know exactly. They were what thinking. You mean. Yeah, yeah, and it was. But you would see some things be just like unbelievable. Yeah. And, 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 but uh, and is that the same with, with youngsters as well? Because obviously, you know, during your time, you had Rio was breaking into the team. Yeah. Frank was breaking into the team. When they were around, obviously, we had a, a few more. Like you know, we had a, we had a great youth team. Um, when you see like when, you know when they, when they sort of turn, you think, oh, this guy's this guy's got it. This guy's quite good. Rio, for sure. Yeah. I mean, probably everybody says that, but it's like you can't tell a player what a player's like either until you've played with them, sure, or directly against them. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I just Rio was coming through. I was leaving. It was just coming through. I yeah, was yeah. Like, I'd left two weeks after he started coming through, but we played a pre-season game, and I was playing left back, and he was playing centre back. Yeah. And for some reason, I, I kept they kept. I kept getting caught out midfielder kept turning and playing the ball inside and Rio was playing left side at centre back kept playing it inside me and Rio and there was nothing I could do about it yeah but never once got by him he always cut the pass out or he always stepped across and he was saving my bacon all the time (laughs) so he was I remember thinking to myself what age are you 6, 17 or whatever it was yeah quality yeah so you could tell the Rio from a young age Joey Cole completely different Joey was like bouncing about he's yeah. one of those players you yeah. know one of, like us small what you might call technical players either you have a good game or you have a, a horrible game yeah, you know yeah, there's yeah. no in between really yeah. but you could tell Joey was a good player and Frank was always like from a young 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 age as soon as I got to West Ham Frank was only 14 I think yeah, he was training with the way, first yeah. team at the time so you know you could tell all these kids were going to come through have you know, the career they had yeah. no, no problem but the yeah. uh, Striker, yeah. Who will put in? You've given me some dilemma there. I think I think I have to. I mean, I played with big hearts, Wimbledon. As well, yeah, yeah. As well, he came to Wimbledon and. You know what? I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna stick Biggie in. Biggie, so Biggie. I'm just gonna stick Biggie in, and so I am. Too right. You need, and again, that's what I love about doing these and talking to different people. It's like all the names and stuff, and and like obviously some players, particularly from the fans' perspective, you have players who, you know, you might not have, you know, had, had in your sort of list, and they go, "Oh my god, yeah, what a great player he was." It's like all different eras and stuff like that, and like Ian and and, and Kenny and, and Laser. I mean, yeah, Laser and and, and Rushy. You, know you, you knew you knew you were going to get. Yes. With those players. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you did. Yeah. And the way the game's gone now, not the harp on about the game's gone this way or gone that way, but every Tom, Dick and Harry now wants to play the game yeah. from the goalkeeper out. Oh, it winds me up. And I'm, so you see the centre-backs are actually standing on the byline. Yeah. Both of them to receive the ball and, and I'm screaming, for the love <laughs> of holy God... <laughs> Would you get a decent target man yeah. in there? Slump it up to stick him up there yeah. and lump it because they've come so far forward. Yeah, one flick on. Yeah, that's it. And yeah. you're in. Yeah, yeah. On goal. I don't get it. It, 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 and it. It's fine. It's fine if you've got like ball playing centre offs. If you have got guys, it's like Matt's like Pep. That's what Pep does. He's got Diaz. He's got he's got Laporte. They like they're comfortable with the ball. I think there's not very not a lot of teams that can do it, but people try and replicate it. West Ham tried to replicate it last year for a little bit. It scares me shitless because yeah. it's like 
Craig Dawson and Ogbonna, fantastic players, but they're not they're not Ruben Diaz and, and, and players like this in terms of their ball skills. Uh, but they're defenders, Ross. Yeah, that's what you do, defend. You but it's the same as fullbacks. You talk about fullbacks. Fullbacks now are not really defenders, are they? They're no. just more auxiliary wingers now, aren't they? But the, you, the fullbacks have always started to go that way, where yeah. the fullbacks are starting to go higher and higher and higher up the yeah. pitch. But you always had a defensive midfield player who was going to come across and, and, and cover that. Yeah. So that wasn't too, too bad. But now when you see... But they're doing it from kids now. Yeah, yeah. They're coaching the kids. And if that's the way it goes, that's yeah, fair goes. enough. I don't yeah, really yeah. say anything about that, yeah. but I'm seeing these kids now and they're teaching them from knee height to whatever to receive the ball from the goalkeeper, pass it out from the back, and they can't do it. Yeah. Because A, they haven't learned how to pass the ball yet. B, they haven't learned how to control the ball properly yet. Yeah. C, they don't know what they're going to do when they get the I ball. Get it, yeah. So it's like trying to jump from one to five without yeah. teaching them one, two, and three. Yeah. And we can't teach them one, two, and three. They have to teach themselves that. Yeah. That's not something that you can teach a kid how to pass the ball, how to control the ball. They have to teach themselves mm. that by kicking the ball against the wall. Yeah. So unless your kids are kicking the ball against the wall for two hours a day, mm. learning how to do these things, you can forget about it. Because yeah. he's not going to learn it from somebody. I can tell you that much. But that's the way the game's gone. It's all about coaching. Whereas... Get the kid, give him a ball, give him a wall, get out there and practice yeah. by yourself for two hours because you're going to do it differently than him and he's going to do it differently. One size doesn't fit all, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So that's the, my one little thing. I don't, <laughs> you want the coaches to do what they're doing and they're giving up their time and it's all fantastic and great. But the kid has to be doing a lot on his own too. If they're not, it's not worth it. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I, I suppose that's why... That's why some players make it some players don't it's, it's, it's putting the effort in isn't it to well that's what it is but if you think you're going to become a footballer by doing your two or three sessions a week yeah with your coach an hour on the pitch and you think you're going to make it yeah you can forget about it yeah because you need to be doing five hours sure every day on your own that's just my take and I don't know if anybody will agree with that or not but that's my take I think so man I think so anyway Right my, over. Oh, that's it that's it <laughs> anyway guys thank you so much for your time I never did a proper introduction but it doesn't matter like share comment subscribe for me and Mike take care everyone stay safe wash those hands come on you irons and we'll see you again very very soon cheers everyone bye bye